Now we're ready to look at functions that map vectors to vectors. Next week, we'll look at a special case of those kinds of functions called linear transformations. What we're going to be looking at are functions that map a vector of size n to a vector of size m. Let's look at some examples. In the previous unit, we looked at a function that took two scalars as input and produced a vector as an output. We can look at a function g that takes as inputs a vector with components alpha and beta and then produces the exact same vector as the function f produced. So now if you feed in the vector with component minus 2 and 1, you perform the exact same calculation as you did for f and you end up producing the exact same vector as an output. Here was another example of a function that took as input a scalar and a vector. We can st instead look at a function g that now stacks the scalar on top of the vector, creating a vector that is of size 4 instead of the size 3 vector that we had before, and then evaluates in exactly the same way. The whole point being that now we have a function that takes as input a vector and as output produces a vector. So in summary, this insight allows us to focus on vector functions that simply take one vector as input and produce one vector as output. What we will see next week is that there is a special class of such functions called linear transformations that are of great importance to linear algebra.